I got uh, something I'm working on here for the truck. I thought I'd show it to you. Uh, I want to mount a hunting camera on the back of my truck on the trailer hitch. This might be a cheapie, I'm not sure. I bought it off Amazon a year or two ago. Okay. But what I wanted to show you is how I'm going to mount it. I'm going to mount it on the trailer hitch. Because uh, last week here in town, we had a bunch of windows broken. Probably at least, at least 10 cars I read on a, uh, it's a Facebook site for suspected criminal activity in my area. So, uh, I know a few years ago I had put a, a hunting camera on a table out there I got by the hose. And, uh, you would think people wouldn't even notice it. But I actually had people ride by and point at it, you know. So people who are up to something, you know, they're looking for this type of thing. So they don't get noticed. I heard years ago that uh, even if you wave at a criminal going down the street, they'll go to another area because then they've been noticed. They don't want to be noticed. So that's why I'm thinking this here. Okay, so I just happen to have this uh, this uh, uh, trailer hitch. Home Depot had them on clearance a few years ago. And uh, I basically bought the whole rack. Got them dirt cheap. I don't remember exactly, but they were like five, ten bucks. So, you know, I got this stuff cheap. and It's just been sitting in the back of the truck so I thought I'd show it to you it's a Reese it's a Reese from what I know Reese is one of the better names in the business and then two inch and then it fits a two inch hitch so on the back of the truck this thing here is two inches so it fits into the two inch hole there's different sizes. I think the other one is an inch or inch and a half. But two inches is the big one. That's just what happens to be on my truck. You know, I bought it used a few years ago. It came all set up. So it says here, the tug is 600 pound capacity. So that don't sound like much, 600 pound. Well, here it says, uh, Okay, length 8.5, that must be this here, 8.5, rise 3 fourths of an inch. Hmm, I wonder what they mean by rise. I'll have to, I'll look that up and put it in the uh, pop-ups. And then uh, mounting hole one inch. That's this guy here. You have to buy a separate ball. And of course, there were balls too on the uh, clearance. I bought a bunch of those too, but they're normally like 20 bucks, you know, just for the ball. And here it says capacity 6,000 pound here. Down here it says tongue 600 pound. So I guess capacity, they're saying you can tow up to 6,000 pounds. So that's quite a bit. You know, if you're towing a boat or a camper or something. I know my truck with the plow and 600 pounds of salt is, uh, I think, 7,100 pounds. Maybe a little more. <clears throat> so capacity, 6,000 pounds, that's quite a bit. So I don't know if I'd want to put 6,000 pounds on that though, you know, it's just a piece of steel. So I doubt if a trailer actually weighs that much. So this part, this would be the important part, 2 inch drop. 
So that, that's this. It's going to drop two inches. Main thing is when you're towing something from this to the item you're connected to, it should be level. So that's why they have the different drops. Okay. Uh, I also have a three inch. I think there's a three inch. I, I think I have a couple different ones. Okay. I've seen videos where guys are uh, towing things that the drop isn't right and they're, what they're towing it isn't level. So that, that can be dangerous. You might be thinking, well, how dangerous can it be? You know, I remember hearing a few years ago on my freeway in my area, this is about 30 miles toward, toward Cleveland, a, uh, a minivan with a family in it was towing a camper and something happened. They said he was just driving down the road, no snow, no activity, nothing out, nothing unusual, just straight road. Something happened where it started to wiggle and uh, the camper just threw the minivan right off the freeway and killed everyone in the minivan. So that's why, you know, towing stuff is, is a serious game, you know. Uh, I'm no expert at this, you know, but uh, that's, the, that's the extent of my knowledge. You know. uh, I had a buddy about 20 years ago you know, great guy, you know, and uh, he was bringing stuff to uh, our local junkyard, and uh, he had a, I never saw the trailer, but I figure it was probably pretty old, you know, just probably, might have even been a makeshift trailer, you know, but he told me he was coming into town, got off the freeway, and he looks out the driver's side window and there's a tire rolling down the road next to him. And he looked back oh, go. and then he looked back and he realized it was his tire that had come off the trailer. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you really got to be careful when towing stuff. It's a serious game. Okay? So that's why I thought I'd show it, I'd show it to you. Okay? Now, inside here, Oh yeah, here, right here it says level ground. And they're showing a picture of how the trailer should be level with the hitch mount. Okay. So it says trailer should be level or slightly nose down when attached correctly. Okay, I'll read that again. Trailer should be level. So the thing you're pulling, the trailer, should be level or slightly nose down when attached correctly. Select the ball mount with the necessary drop. So th this would be the ball mount. Select the ball mount with the necessary drop or rise to achieve this position. Uh, you can get these mounts where they're adjustable to all different sizes. They're pretty expensive. If you look at them on Amazon, you're talking a couple hundred. You know. But there's different ball sizes, big balls, little balls, and, it, and it's adjustable up and down. So if you're into pulling a lot of things, you know, you got a boat, camper, trailer, you know, things like that, then uh, you might want to invest in something like that. I wouldn't leave it on the truck when you're not using it because it might be very tempting to steal. They're also showing this that you could use it the other way, that you could use it that way too if if you have to so that's this picture here they, they have it flipped up they have it flipped 
they have it flipped upside down. Okay? So I, I didn't want to go into great detail with this, mainly because I don't know much about it. But uh, I had researched it a few years ago, and I planned on doing a video, but uh, never got around to it. But I just wanted to show you the basics here. Okay. And then usually you just stick a hitch pin in here. It just looks like a metal post and it might be bent just a little bit with a cotter pin. Just a piece of clip. Just a small piece of metal they slide in there so it won't fall off. Well if you spend a lot of money on these things you don't want it stolen. So that's where these things come in. This is a lock. And this wasn't cheap either. This the lock probably cost more than this. Okay. So you know that's got a hold six thousand pounds. So let's see. That's also made by Reese. Let's see, stainless steel so don't rust. Class three and four. Receiver lock. So this would this would be the receiver. Or no, let's see, the receiver would be on the truck, right? Okay, so it says receiver lock. So I think the receiver would be on the truck because the receiver is going to receive this, right? This says 5 eighths. Yeah, okay, there might be different sizes. So I'm just hoping this is the right size for this here. Okay, so here it says... Uh, Patented design eliminates weak points, and they're showing the different types. Standard lock, that's the one down here at the bottom, it's, it's the uh, end of the bolt kind of thins out, where this one stays solid, where this one stays solid. Dust cap. That must be this here. Dust cap. You know, underneath the truck it gets real rusty. I had locks on my snow plow and uh, I just took it off a few days ago and the locks were uh, full of salt. It took me like a half hour or more to get the locks out. To It took me a half hour or more to uh, get the key in the hole just to take the lock out. So this just fits up, so the cap just fits on here, so the cap just fits on here, and the other side looks like that. It looks like there's like a pin inside there. Just a slender pin. Here's the key, heavy duty key, that's not a normal key. So the key just goes in and turns. Can't really see it doing it anything here. Okay. And then this part here is just solid on one end. And this end's got a little ball that flips back and forth. Oh, there's 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 two balls there, there's a ball on on each side and then that pin that pin must go inside that hole and keep the balls extended so that's the only thing that's holding it is those little balls hmm well Maybe a cotter pin might be more secure. <laughs> I, I, I suppose Reese knows, knows what they're doing, right? Okay. So it just, just slides on here. I don't 
we'll see how it slides on there. Oh, let's see here. This part pops out. Guess I should have read the directions, huh? This part pops out. Okay, so the pin pops back. That pin in there goes back. And then slide that on and then press that. Okay. We figured it out without reading the directions. So to take it off, turn the key, turn the key, pull out. So this part comes out and then pull it off. So just to go through that again, pull this out, pull this little extension out, slide that on, turn the key, and pop that in. He won't come out until you turn it in. Uh, it kind of come out there. Let's see. Key won't come out until you put it in the lock position. Well, it, it kind of will. So it must it must know what it's doing internally. Okay. You kind of got to start it over toward the lock position, or the key won't come out. Doesn't look like there's really no directions. Reese Toe Power Professional Locks have triple theft protection. Reese Toe Power Professional Locks have triple theft protection. Weak points found in standard locks have been eliminated. Patented ball, patented ball bearing locking system keeps lock. Engaged even if thief pries head off. Virtually pick proof. Square key design. Okay. In case you're interested, this model number is 70302. 70302. So the important thing here would be the 5 eighths. 5 eighths is the size. So on the side of here, there's a hole. See, I'm gonna just, instead of peeling the whole thing off, I'm just going to cut the hole out here so I can keep the directions on there. There's only one hole. That 5 eighths must be a standard size. Okay. Cool. Okay, so the main gist of the video is I wanted to show you my mount here. See, I was trying to figure out a way to mount this camera someplace. You know, there's, there's really no place on the back of the truck. You know, if they come up, throw a rock through the back window, I want to get a picture, right? So that's why I wanted it on the back of the truck. I guess I could put it on the side of the house. That might work too. But uh, this was the first thing I thought of. So this is just a piece of wood, painted it black, four by four. I got a hole drilled in it, half inch. 
and this would just go on here and then this would just go on here like that okay so I I just happen to have these uh, my hole was a half inch a half inch hole I drilled in that uh, that hole there was a half inch so this would just go in here I got a couple big washers there too and then, and then this would just go on here you got a couple washers here Okay, so uh, what I was thinking was instead of going and get another bolt, this, you know, I could take it off the back of the truck and hang it in the basement. So that actually turned out good without having to take it all apart. And it could kind of double as like a back bump stop too. And you put a sheet of rubber on here and then mount this. Uh, I have another camera and there's uh, there's things on the side, plastic things, where I put screws in to screw it onto a tree. So uh, I'm not a hunter but uh, I like these for security and you know, I put them in the yard get pictures of things. This one doesn't have any mounts on the side. There's places on the back for a strap but straps make it too easy to steal so I don't know what I'm gonna do here probably some type of metal strap just like a just like a metal pipe strap across the middle or something but that would make it a pain to uh, get the memory card out see inside here there's a memory card Maybe not. My other one has a memory card. This one you might just have to plug it into a USB port. Oh, here's here's the here's the memory card here. So that way you can just change out the memory card. Okay. So I'll I'll do a video on this once I read up on it. Uh, it's been a while since I looked at the directions. Okay. So main thing, I just wanted to show you my mount. Okay. How I got this centered was I put the four by four on the back, measured the sides, used the square, drew a pencil mark along here and then drilled the four holes you know my pencil marks on the back i started the bolts here and then put the wood on the pencil marks so i know it was still square not that it had to be perfect but uh, I, I didn't want it to be too crooked so this thing here that's not light that's probably close to 20 pounds okay a bit much for a camera mount, but uh, it'll do the job. Okay, see ya. Bye.